Okay, I put this up on my community post a few weeks ago, and I know this is a dead joke, but I still have a laugh at these sometimes. She's a 10, but she's your sister. <laughs> I mean, the funny part is I actually know who your sister is. I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, I hope your family is going well. She's a 10, but she uses a Master Ball on a Magikarp. I mean, I used a Master Ball on a Hoot Hoot, and I feel like that made me go from a 4 to a 10. So I can't judge, that just keeps you as a 10. She's a 10, but she doesn't fix up her Creeper Explosion Pulse. Nah, bro, nah, 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 then she's a 0. Nah, anyways, hi, I am Aurelius. I don't know why I'm introducing myself when 82% of you who watch my videos are already subscribed anyway. But if you are that 18% of people who are not sub, I am a gaming content creator who plays mostly Nintendo games and have been in a very indie game mood as of this last week. I have played three games so far and I'm going to be giving you reviews for every single one of them. I'm also going to be playing two more upcoming games after the release of this video, so if you subscribe to me, you might be able to catch me on a live stream. This review is going to be about Time on Frog Island, a cute little life simulation game that's similar to the likes of Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. During this review, I'll be reviewing gameplay and mechanics, art style and visuals, and story, so you know if you should give this game a crack. I will rate each of those aspects out of five, and I'll add it all up in the end to give it an overall score. Let's get started. The story of this game is very simple. The main story of this game is you get shipwrecked on an island of frogs and it is your goal to fix the ship and leave by trading items with these frogs. While you're fixing a ship, you end up with a cute little adventure where you're experiencing more minor storylines in order to complete the journey. Not to get too deep into it, but some storylines are better than others. Some leave you feeling very accomplished and others make you feel like you wasted your time, but that's usually the whole point. There was a whole storyline about getting a feather once, which took me way too long to figure out, but I was so happy when I figured it out. <laughs> oh, I got the feather! I got the feather! Okay, okay, okay. Bruh! Bruh, 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 bruh! Bruh, we're making progress! There isn't much to say here aside from that it's a charming storyline. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It keeps you wanting to find out more and complete the story though, and I feel like that's what matters. So with that, I'll give the story a 3 out of 5. Gameplay and Mechanics This is where I get into some actual complaints about the game. The gameplay and mechanics in my opinion were so hit and miss at times. I'll start off with the good parts though. In this game, you have a day and night cycle as well as a weather cycle. This creates a feeling of realism, especially because you can do different things depending on the new environments. For example, at night, there are no frogs around, so you can take things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to take, aka stealing. <laughs> and another example is, there are certain things that are only available during certain weathers for you to collect and trade. Also a big win is that there's no full damage in this game, so that saves you a lot of time doing things. Okay, now, to the complaints. For an island that has so many characters and places dispersed across a fairly large area, I think it's a huge miss that we didn't get a mini-map or an option to roam the camera around like you do in MOBA games like Pokemon Unite or the other indie game that I played, Silt. Review for that coming out soon as well. This just made things a lot more difficult than it needed to be and I felt like I was wasting time whenever I was looking for someone in particular. Also the frogs in my opinion all looked the same. There were pretty much only two frogs that I could identify because they had distinct features. Like one of them were really tall and the other one was holding a scarecrow that annoying th I know in the end the game made it easier by having the characters hang around in roughly the same places and the thought bubbles over their heads whenever they needed something. But I feel like the game would have been so much better if the frogs were more easily identifiable and there was a way to keep track of not only where you're going but where those frogs are as well. Also, this is a big complaint that I see a lot of other people have about the game, but the option to have an inventory to carry multiple things would have been really nice as well. And like so many other games, the option to fast travel to the rest areas using a map would have been really nice as well. Maybe those features weren't in the budget, I don't know, I'm not a game developer, but I do see other games with the same price range have features like that to make things feel less like a chore. But with that, let's go give it a score. Ha, <laughs> see I made that rhyme. I think there's a lot of room to improve when it comes to the gameplay and mechanics of this game. So for that reason, I'm going to give the gameplay and mechanics a 2 out of 5. Art style and visuals. Now I want to make this abundantly clear. I know there's a lot of people who throw around the word graphics a lot, but I think there's a big difference between graphics and visuals. 
I am not in the artist world or digital art world by any means, but from what I gather, visuals are how things look in terms of color, contrast and all that stuff, and graphics are more individual aspects like frame rate, quality, vectors and all that. I might be completely wrong, but I'm just mentioning this because this might be something that you need to keep in mind while I'm reviewing games and playing games as well. Because bruh, I stream and usually upload at a quality of 720p. The graphics you see ain't that good. The visuals and art style maybe, but definitely not the graphics. And with that in mind, the art style and visuals for this game is absolutely amazing. The chibi characters suit the game really well and it makes them look absolutely adorable. And the way the setting and scenery is presented is also very charming. This game has inspired an artist who watches me to go make a whole fan art as well. Have a look at this. L like seriously, how good did that turn out? I don't think there's actually that many games to actually inspire other artists to be imaginative and draw something like this, so thank you Mr. List for making that. The colours and contrast of the scenery in this game look absolutely amazing and I genuinely cannot find a fault in it. The game nailed this, so I'm giving this a rating of 5 out of 5. Okay, for now, I'll keep it at that. I don't want to make this video too long. I can go much more into depth but that'll go into extreme spoiler territory and take up a lot more of your time which I don't want to do. Overall, I think this is a very charming game, and if you like other life simulators like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, you will love this game. This game gets an overall rating of 10 out of 15, so if you do the math and round up the numbers, it's a 6.5 out of 10. I enjoyed this game, I would play it again as well. Leave your thoughts in the comments about what your thoughts are on this game and if you're gonna buy it as well. But that's it from me, thank you for watching, take care everyone, see ya!